In this video, we look at limiting friction and its effects on the objects. To understand the concept of limiting friction, let us consider a simple example. We have a refrigerator at one corner of the room. You are asked to move it to the another corner. At the first instance, you try to push it casually. The fridge doesn't move. Now you try again, but this time you are really pushing it harder. Still, the fridge won't move. The force which is resisting your push and holding the fridge in that position is the frictional force. As we saw in our last video, it is due to surface irregularities and interlocking of these irregularities. It increases with the applied force till a certain point. As we can see from the graph, the relation is linear. Frictional force will be equal to your applied force on the fridge. Now, you are really determined to push it. You push the fridge with all the force you have got. The fridge is about to move from its static position. This point is known as the point of impending motion. If the force is increased a tiny bit, the fridge will start to move. Finally, the fridge moves. The force that you overpowered is the static friction. So, the maximum limiting value of the friction up to which an object does not move is termed as limiting static friction. It is denoted as Fs max. Once you have overcome the limiting static friction, the amount of force required to keep the fridge moving will be less. But there will be some frictional force even when you are moving the fridge. This is called as the dynamic friction. Friction will be changing according to your applied force. It is changing dynamically, hence the name dynamic friction. As we can see from the graph, till point A, the frictional force will be proportional to the applied force. After the point of impending motion, it will go in the region of dynamic friction or sometimes called as kinetic friction. The sudden drop in the limiting frictional force can be observed when you try to push or pull a chair or any object for that matter on the floor, there will be a jerk before it starts to move. So, this is all about limiting static friction. To sum up, we learned that no motion occurs when applied force F is less than the limiting friction Fs max. And when the applied force is equal to the limiting friction, the motion is about to start or it is at a point of impending motion. And finally, when the applied force F becomes greater than the limiting friction Fs max, the object will move. This is limiting friction. In the next video, we look at the types of friction and their applications. See you there.